There is just like in Zardoz, everything the people did had a little crystal going through their brain and it was preserved. And when their body died, they were just reinvented. And if they'd broken any laws, they just aged them. And if they were really bad, they were banished to uh, the endless old people's <laughs> ballroom. You remember that? No. Yeah. What is Zardoz? It's an old movie? No one knows Zardoz? Well, you know, I, I lived in Beverly Hills and, you know, it got to the point, what can you do? And they're always looking for unusual things there. And so I, Sean Connery played the lead, came out. He was a super advanced, uh, uh, he was done genetically engineered to an advanced being. The, Engl the this advanced civilization of mankind, one of them was broken the laws. They all wanted to die because this crystal was preserving everything they were. So he invented this most advanced man on the planet. To, so he would kill them all and destroy their civilization so he could die um, because everything was always preserved. So, um, so Sh Sean Connery p played this, this being that uh, had total mind control and um, he could control his emotions and feelings and, um, and he essentially, uh, it was a real fun movie. It was my kind of movie because it was a uh, parody and a satire and a humor based on um, technology as being the solution to our requirements. So it was like a government controlled karma crystal? Or That's exactly what it was. You got it exactly right. Government controlled karma crystal. You can have the world ideas. <laughs> okay. Um, so. Um, On, since I said the word technology, I have a saying. Numbers are technology. Okay? Math is a science. And, um, and the universe is a machine. And spirit is mechanical. Um, when we talk about God, when we talk about spirit, when we talk about human beings, um, we try to not get our head guillotined, cut off by um, offending the infrastructure, the hierarchical society, institutions, and, and governments, corporations. In the case here, the fact is is that spirit is harnessable. It can be used as a work wheel. It is actually a source of drive that can be made into an engine. And it's the, it's the energy that God used to create our universe, our cosmology. And universe means one. There's only one universe, and that's the world of creation. There's many worlds within this world, but there's only one physical world of creation. And um, we'll go on. I'll come back to it. Now, we saw this again, 525.125. So, let's take a look at... Let's see. This chart here. May fall, but that's all right. Move the uh, move this posters out more, so they're leather. They're real heavy, though. Oh. Um, the powers of ten come from half of one is point five. That would be one over one, by the way. Correct? One line one. This would be five over ten. Okay. So the 10 goes there. This would be 25 line 100. 100 would go there. This would be 125 thousandths. Okay, so we have now 625 ten thousandths, 3,125 hundred thousandths. This is called the powers of 10. 1 times 10 is 10, 10 times 10 is 100, 10 times 100 is 1,000. 
10 times 1,000 is 10,000. 100,000, million, 10 million, 100,000, 1 billion, 10 billion, 100 billion, a trillion. Everyone have it? Okay. Now, um, with the 10 right there, the third time that the 10 reoccurs again is exactly horizontal. But it had to go one, two, three to reemerge again. This energy has a phasing in thirds. What I just did, sunshine, is I sh You could hear? Oh, good. Okay, so the tens are horizontally lining up, these are horizontally lining up, and these are horizontally lining up. Why? Because there's a spray, okay, shooting out from the center. This is a spray. They're like little BBs, okay. Um, we see the points here are mirrors. They're totally different than these two and totally different from these two, just as the tens are different from the hundreds are different from the ones. Okay. So in our infinity, we have three horizontal lining ups of three pairs with each pair being totally different from the other pairs. Does everyone see that? These pairs are kind of deep in the inside. These are way on the outside. And these are kind of in the middle. Okay. Because of the sprays making that shape, that construct. We see that tens are always here, we see that hundreds are always here, and ones are always here, no matter what. Here's a million, here's a billion. They're always going to still be ones. Okay? Now, this is a geometry. And in science and math today, they teach that numbers, as in arithmetic, cannot explain geometry. And I discovered they were wrong. I discovered that numbers are geometry. They are, numbers are not modeling something. They are the model themselves. It's a real big discovery. It means that five billion people would flunk math. Okay? The only problem is is if these two points are perfect mirrors, there's an axis down the center, everything's a mirroring right and left, it's called bilateral symmetry, then what do we do with the 1 and 8, since they're not mirrors? Or the 2 and 7, since they're not mirrors? Or the 4 and 5, since they're not mirrors? Okay. Well, Do we throw out the whole system? Do we say that we finally found something that was incorrect in my discovery? That mathematically it's obsolete already? We challenge it to the maximum. Any error, any mistake anywhere in it, any incongruity, we rip and tear this thing apart and we find out where that error and what that is and if it's really wrong. So the only way I can do that is I go ahead and I say, well, where's our symmetry that I've been talking about? Where's our parity? Where's our mirroring? Where's our wings? See how the right side over here is a perfect mirror? They're like two wings on a bird flying. Where is it? So I take our multiples of one from the standard multiplication table. I reduce them to single digit, which I call the kids multiplication table, using horizontal math. And I look at the symmetry. Well, multiples of 1 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Well, multiples of 8 is 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 9. I look at multiples of, of 2. 2, 4, 6, 8, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Multiples of 7 are perfect mirror. 7, 5, 3, 1, 8, 6, 4, 2, 9. I look at multiples of, of 5 and 4. 4, 8, 3, 7, 2, 6, 1, 5, 9, which is the total reverse of 5. 5, 1, 6, 2. Everything's a mirror. 3 is 3, 6, 9, 3, 6, 9, 6 is 6, 3, 9, 6, 9, but 9, it's self-similar. It's always 9, 9, 9, 9. So let's see if that's true. So sure enough, I go multiples of 1 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. That means 8's the last number before 9. I better have an 8 over here being a mirror of that 8. 
And I better have a 7 after it. But 2 eighths is 16. I'm writing them for your benefit. Which is 7. 3 eighths is 24. There it is again. Which is a 6. 32. 5. 44. And of course I got 3, 2, 1, 9 after it. Because once I got three numbers, I got a stereoscopic projection. I know all the remaining numbers are going to be at the same sequence. Perfect mirrors. The real clincher is when I do it with two. Two, four, six, eight, one, three, five, seven, nine. Okay, which is seven, five, three, one, eight, six, four, two, nine. Two sevens is fourteen, which is five. Twenty-one, three, twenty-eight, ten, one. Uh, seven times five is thirty-five, eight, etc. Forty-two, six. Anyone follow that? Any statements, anybody? The number I like nine. <laughs> you like nine? The number for it's safe. The You're playing it safe. The number for Are you bring assholes to the teacher? The number for the universe, boys and girls, is nine. Say it again? The number for the universe in like Sesame Street is nine. In Sesame Street, you say the number you, for the universe? You know, I, I, I never saw Sesame oh, Street. Well, they always had a number of the day. It's the number for the universe. Right. Oh, yeah. The number for the universe is nine. Exactly right. In fact, the saying is, that the universe is created after nine conditions. That's in the Sarata Hayakau. It's called the Suri of the Temple. It's a Baha'i scripture that's very old. So the universe has been created after nine conditions. What's a condition? We're going to find out what a number, what a condition is. Each no number has its own condition. There's never any redundancy. Okay? Um, Judy says, what about primes? Right? I think, I think that's a little bit more harder than, it, than for us to go into at this moment. But it totally encompasses all primes and how they work. But I have bad news. The definition for a prime is not a true prime. Would it work in your system? This, is, this system is what creates primes. <laughs> but you, have you experimented with primes? I, I have spent very little time on it. I went ahead and with primes, I kind of realized pretty fast that the definitions, yeah, we have to have conventional definitions for things so we all can agree in different countries on what we're working on. And I immediately realized, as soon as I looked at primes, that their definition of primes was false. Um, there's a lot more to primes than they were understanding. So I would. So what I do is I, I prefer to tie this in with primes. So if we wanted to just do a whole session on primes, not a session even, I would call it a, a, a brainstorming together to see about how to present primes, then we'd have to do it. But I could never do primes alone. I can't do any conventional type of math alone. I would have to take both of your, since you're both math teachers, participation together working with me and sharing. Because I haven't learned the nomenclature of existing math. And one other thing is I need everything on a personal level. So when I study and learn the textbooks and stuff, if I don't have a friend there for when I have a question, I just kind of get burnt out on it real fast. And, uh, okay. Everyone?